so a, a literature review like we said FEM is limited uh, because it's based on continuity remember the example I gave the example of uh, the example of this isolated element based on continuity so this the where where element a ends is where element b starts so that is continuity so if there is cracking and separation we cannot see so this is limiting a uh, limiting feature of fe um, so Mm, the, uh, DM is based on contact models and I would like to do a very very brief and simple introduction of the models and here I will get bias like I said before uh, my focus is to deal with rock and cementitious material so I'll just introduce a model that focuses on the rock and cementitious material uh, but for your information, there are many and varied models depending on the type of material. For example, if you talk about soil, uh, we have sand and clay. There is model suitable for clay and there is another model suitable for sand. And different, even the powders, there is a model suitable for one powder and a different a model suitable for a different kind of uh, powder. Now, I, if you are interested, you can hit me up, leave comments, or send me uh, uh, um, an email. I can provide uh, inf inf more information about these other uh, different models. But to keep it simple, just know that there are many and varied models depending on the material to be modeled. Now, in this case, I'll introduce the simplest and the one most relevant to my situation. Uh, say, Hertz Mindlin contact model is the most common, initially developed for loose granular materials. So, like I said before, these two materials, so the interaction is purely frictional. The mechanics, the, these, these particles will interact, collide, uh, uh, perfectly or imperfectly depending again on the software you use we have what you call hard sphere hard sphere approach this this is a function of the model and the software there is what you call hard sphere approach also soft sphere approach but this is outside the scope of the current presentation so just know that for the heads mingling modeling there is the for the heads mindlin model the original contact model is a purely frictional interaction so once the particles collide we compute the forces and uh, maybe if there are some deflections i'm um, sorry yeah there's some uh, um, distortion or some di di distortion in the in the within the particles then all this is a purely uh, frictional computation. So the forces and the mechanics, uh, we purely use friction to calculate. So for this, the original heads mendelian model uh, uh, did not uh, take care of bond, did not assume existence of a bond. So this was just for loose granular material. In fact, the original heads mendelian model is a good contact for modeling sand, sandy soil. So this method was later improved to hedge mindling contact model with bonding to apply for cemented materials. So actually the hedge mindling contact model with bond, once the bond breaks, it goes back to the original hedge mending model. So the behavior after the bond breaks is purely hedge mindling uh, model. So to delve a little bit into the hedge mindling uh, uh, with bonds, this is based on the works of Professor Potondi and Kundal. You may read their work in the International Journal of Rock Mechanics and Mining Sciences. Uh, I'm sure if you Google it, you will easily find it. And like I said, I introduced before the particles in the original Hertz model 
is a purely frictional interaction. Now, in this case, when we introduce a bond, when we introduce a bond, then this bond is represented, uh, the, or this bond needs to have certain properties. Uh, so it is represented well, uh, with, with a stiffness and some damping properties. Now, this stiffness and a damper is the same principle used to to represent soil's response to earthquake but this is outside the scope of this particular video so in this case we just focus on the on the representation between of the bond between one particle to another so if this is particular one particle this another particle in 3d then the bond is represented by spring you can see there and a damper and the damping action is provided by the friction which is an inherent property of either the soil or the rock or the cementitious components like aggregates if you're talking about a cementitious material so if the bond needs to have certain uh, properties uh, for example a radius we need to have a bonded disc radius which is as shown then we need to have a strength and a stiffness but there are two directions so we're talking about a critical shear strength this is in the shear direction and shear stiffness per unit area which is the stiffness in the shear direction we also have uh, normal strength critical normal strength which is the strength in the normal direction and normal stiffness per unit area which is the a stiffness in the normal direction then finally guys uh, I'd wish to introduce a hybrid finite discrete element modeling like I have introduced before the DEMs really take a long time so for lack of a better word hybrid finite discrete element modeling is like kind of a compromise and for this, for this, for example, you have uh, a model, and then the model is divided into into ele into elements like this. Now, but for this, the elements now become the discrete elements. That means. The separation can only occur around the mesh boundary so separation or the fracturing can only occur around the mesh boundary mesh boundary but this is limiting because okay as can be seen here so when a fracture occurs then uh, four four element for boundary node you can see here for boundary node is inserted that becomes the fracture you can see as shown sorry um, let me indicate it a little bit more clearly so a four node element is inserted A four node element mm, it's difficult to a four node element here yeah. a four node element is inserted as the fracture but this is limiting because the fracturing can only occur at the mesh boundary and this is somewhat uh, predetermined because as you know when we are testing the material the material needs to be allowed to fracture at its weakest point but in these methods then the uh, fracturing uh, uh, zone or the area is kind of predetermined so this is a limitation again this method is depending on the size you use so for example if you use slightly large sizes of element mesh then the calculation time is reasonable but if you use very very small mesh sizes then the calculation time approaches the discrete element 
modeling. So these are a few, you can read uh, this uh, introduc this work uh, by uh, Listjak and Grazelli, uh, also a publication in Journal of Rock Mechanics and uh, Rock, Rock Mechanics and Geotechnical Engineering. There are some commercially available softwares for uh, finite discrete element modeling. And this is an open source code uh, for uh, for fi hybrid finite discrete element uh, modeling method. So guys, uh, like I promised, I wanted to make it simple. I wish to end my video here. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, but uh, 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 just to summarize, uh, the, the core message is that the finite and in finite element, the elements are based on continuity, so separation is impossible. So this is limiting for fracture mechanics. But discrete element modeling, uh, the contact models allow for complete detachment, so you can see fracture. Uh, this is important. Hybrid finite discrete element modeling, the fracturing only occurs at the mesh boundary, and this is limiting although this also has its own uh, use, usage and uh, is a good compromise between the long time taken by DEM to calculate and the accuracy we need sometimes if you're interested in fracture mechanics. So this can also give you a, a good pattern of fracture but depends on the size of the mesh and the limitation is that the meshing, I mean the fracturing only occurs at the, at the mesh boundary. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much. And I see you for my next video. Goodbye.